Joining us now on the line is Ann Coulter, the author of many books on the New York Times bestseller list. Her most recent book is Adios America. Ann, thanks for being with us here on the Howie Carr Show. Good to be back, Howie. So what do you think of uh, Paul Ryan, or as I call him, Paul Rhino, uh, being pushed forward as the, uh, as the candidate of the, uh, the Washington est- Republican establishment uh, as the next speaker? Did anybody else see his debate with Biden? <laughs> I mean, other than Biden m- mugging and, uh, you know, making all those ridiculous faces, Biden won that debate. If you're losing a debate to, to Joe Biden, maybe you are, you are not our best spokesman. I mean, all these young Turks who have been so promoted by the media, um, Kevin McCarthy, Eric Cantor, Paul Ryan, oh, the young guns, um, they're, they're, they're ridiculous. They're all pro-amnesty. They're all pro-mass immigration. Um, and their big claim to fame is we're going to tinker around with some entitlement programs. Oh, yeah, that's the road to victory, Republicans. Um, Mickey Kaus was tweeting about this last night, or I guess early this morning, and I retweeted him. His idea was, could somebody introduce Paul Ryan to Renee Elmer's? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. And Mickey uh, Kaus know. says, I'm vicious. <laughs> and have you, had you heard the McCarthy Elmer's rumor before? Yeah, to be uh, perfectly honest with you, I hate to shoot down totally fun, salacious rumors like this. Um, but from what I hear from my sources on the Hill, it's not even true. <laughs> but, but it's funny. Well, then <laughs> what would have what would have changed totally in those magic pro amnesty, pro open borders? And by the way, whether we'll, we'll get back to whether or not it's true, I've, I I sense some disagreement. Um, but but good for that Walter Jones. I agree with him. What is it with our Republicans that they they put up guys? You you know about that letter, Walter Jones? Yeah, and, right. Well, the, yeah, the congressman from uh, the congressman from North Carolina, a former Democrat, by the way, whose father was a Democrat congressman. Yeah. Well, their Democrats were were different back then. No, I, I know. I, I agree. Um, but he he said, "Look, I lived through Newt Gingrich having to resign over a, an affair. I had to live through Bob Livingston having to resign over an affair." Whomever we choose as our next speaker, could it please be someone that when he leaves Congress, he, he, do, he isn't engaging in behavior, whether it's gambling or speeding um, or any sort of behavior that's going to bring dis- disrepute? Well, well um, I think that's why, that's why they like... Uh, what, the, what are these people thinking, well, even running, if they have something like that in their, in their well, closet? And if, if, if the, the rumor isn't true, what happened yesterday that convinced over the between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. that convinced Kevin McCarthy that he was a dead man. Well, I, again, I hate to be in the position of shooting down totally hilarious, salacious rumors against a politician I don't care for, and I don't care for him for a very simple reason. Um, Kevin McCarthy is massively pro-amnesty, you know, instantly legalized them all. Good thinking. Um, also, he's another one, like Marco Rubio, um, who went to you know some bush league scholarship on a, on a football college on a football scholarship? We have really smart guys in our caucus. How about if they- I were in a court of law, and right now I would say, Your Honor, will you direct the witness to answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened at eight a.m.? It could be, well for what he didn't have the votes. He's very bad on amnesty. Um, he's, and he's, he can't talk. I was leading to that. The can't talk part was he's a moron. He's a complete abject moron. Have you heard him talk? Yes. Um, and what I've noticed about our guys is we do have a lot of smart guys. They all happen to be the ones who don't want the Republican Party to commit suicide by continuing our current immigration policies. I mean, it's guys like Steve King and, as I was saying, um, Dave Bratt. You see, it all leads back to the answer, Howie. You should, you should let the, the witness ramble sometimes. <laughs> We have some smart guys, and they're the ones who were opposing um, Kevin McCarthy for perfectly sound policy reasons. Uh, I hate this stuff about the centrist and the shutdown caucus and the and the freedom caucus. No, the issue is immigration. This is the litmus test. This is how we tell the mice from the men. And the smart ones are all on the anti-immigration side. The stupid ones being promoted by the media because that serves the media's left-wing anti-American agenda are the stupid ones they can push around. You know, I like agree Kevin with McCarthy, you. Like Marco Rubio. I agree with you about uh, Kevin McCarthy not being too bright. I was thinking about that last night when I was reading up on uh, Renee Elmer's. If You know, her, she's married to a surgeon. <laughs> and, it, I mean, if it's true, how would you like to be her her, her husband? I mean, you, you cheated on me 
with this boob? <laughs> this guy well, who can't, he's as yeah. dumb as Jeb Bush. <laughs> I know. Okay, you see? You see how my litmus test is answering all of these questions? <laughs> If they're dumb, they're pro-amnesty, they're beloved by the media. So they get pushed forward and, oh, they're the young guns, and look yeah. at these smart guys. Why, gosh, we're so afraid Listen. as Democrats. They want to tinker with Social Security, a- but they'll pass amnesty, <laughs> a- and, <laughs> and like- then the entire country is finished. And listen, I gotta, I gotta uh, run some of these quotes by you that uh, were sent to me today about Paul Ryan because I think I still think Rhino is the uh, is the guy they want, and and they're going to push him into into running. This is from National Review. Paul Ryan's immigration play, like his mentor Jack Kemp, he's pro immigration. Here's Ryan. Ryan said he told a guy named uh, Raymond Arroyo, who's some kind of host. I actually campaigned with Jack Kemp against a thing called. Proposition 187. Oh, yeah, that's something to brag about. Ryan's ties to the, this again, the National Review, Ryan's ties to the pro-immigration mafia run deep. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's Newsmax. Paul Ryan leading house for amnesty deal. And this is a quote from uh, Grover Norquist. Uh, I if Ryan oh no this is this is from the story but they're quoting Norquist if Ryan is worried about a conservative backlash on immigration he is showing no signs of it he has offered to debate anyone who says an earned path to citizenship is the equivalent of amnesty wait and, a second you got to get a call into his office and tell him I'll debate him you'll debate him yeah you have a debate coming up don't you he could go to that right not with not with him I'm going to be a politicon out here in L A tomorrow. Um, with that guy, Senk Uger, for one panel, and then a panel on refugees with Joe Klein. A good time will be had by all. Um, but you, you, seriously, put, get, put in a call to his office. We'll do it on your radio show. That would be great. Well, I'll, we'll, we'll try to do that. Uh, we'll try to, here's Breitbart. Uh, wait, the, uh, could I just wait. Well, you, you're moving on too quickly, and I have some important footnotes to yes. drop on this. Yes. Um, first of all, anyone who is, who, is, who is citing Jack Kemp, this is all you need to know about Jack Kemp. In his debate as a, vice pres- a losing vice presidential candidate against Al Gore, Al Gore pulled that smarmy thing liberals will do to you sometimes to smear the entire, your entire party. He congratulated, look up the exact words on this, he congratulated Jack Kemp for not being a racist, unlike the rest of his party. Now, what would someone like you or me say to that, say to that Howie Carr, and what did Jack Kemp say? What? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you mean you're a racist because you want the laws enforced? I love that. Um, no, he smeared the entire Republican Party. No, I know. I, yeah. He was praising, uh, right. praising Jack Kemp for not being a racist like the rest of the Republican Party. This is the guy, Paul Ryan, who lost a debate to Joe Biden. Um, this is what he's pushing out there. Yeah, no. Okay, go ahead. Well, okay. <laughs> now we come to uh, Representative Ileana Ross LeHayton. Le- she's from Miami. Uh, she's the Republican Cuban from Miami. Right. Paul Ryan works every – this is Breitbart. Paul Ryan works every day toward amnesty bill. That's what the, she said about yeah. Paul Ryan. She, the uh, Ross yeah, Layton and, and other – issues. The problem with the, the – um with her and, and with some Republican, um, you know, Latinos or whatever, whatever, whatever immigrant group it is, you have to always remember they have, well, like Rubio, they have more power the more this country turns into Latin America. They are not speaking for the Latin Americans or the immigrants themselves. They are speaking for spokesmen like themselves, as we saw from that magnificent tape of the Colombian woman who loved Trump so much. It was the cover of Drudge. I tweeted it out. Um, and she's jumping up, and she clearly loves, loves, loves Trump. She has the, the People magazine. She's waving an American flag. No, I, I, Trump is 100% right. Of any Hispanics who would ever consider voting Republican, Trump will win a majority of their votes because he's trying to save their jobs and save the country that they went to a lot of trouble to immigrate to. Yeah. Uh, let, let me go back to this other one here. Uh, when uh, when he was talking to when he was hanging out with Jack Kemp, Paul Ryan was a protege. Again, this is the National Review was a protege of strategist Cesar Conda. Do you know oh, who yes. Cesar Conda is? Now, well, he ruined uh, Senator Abraham's career, one one term senator, by having him push 
you know, mass immigration. From Michigan. Now he's ruining Marco Rubio's career. Oh, Amnesty, it's going to be a huge hit. The voters will love you. Look, you got this nice op-ed in the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, they say they say all of us uh, talk show hosts are ruining the uh, ruining the Republican conference in the House. They, they had an editorial today. These unnamed evil talk show hosts. We're trying to increase our ratings, Ann. Uh, uh, oh, good grief! Good grief! The country. Do you see the Business Insider video um, of me that just got posted yesterday? It's only about sixty seconds, but um, you know, it's a tribute to you, Matt Drudge. Me and I guess, you know, Mickey Kaus and two other people. Um, and it really is. It's three bloggers and the American people against the entire world. No, this, uh, trying to save America by stopping mass immigration from, from the third world is not a good way to, is not a path to success in the media in America today. Give me a break. I have the debate, Howie Kemp's response exactly as well. I thank you, Al. I mean that very, very sincerely. The, the, quote, the quote from Gore was, the quote from Gore was, through much of his career, Jack Kemp has been a powerful and needed voice against the kind of coarseness and incivility that you referred to. It's extremely valuable to have a voice within the Republican Party who says we ought to be one nation. I compliment Mr. Kemp for the leadership he has shown in moving us away from that. Yeah, he knows a lot about one nation. He thought e pluribus unum, uh, Al Gore. He said uh, out, of, out of one, many. That's what okay, it means. I just want to point out, off the top of my head, I gave you an excellent summary of that exchange. You did. Yes, you, you did, did. well. It was very and close. And you just sprung Jack Kemp on me. Who is, uh, do you By think way, Ryan is going to be the guy in? Pardon? Never mind that whether you want him and whether Howie wants him, but do you think Ryan is going to take the job? Certainly hope not. I, 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 I mean, for the reasons we're describing, and I don't know, it seems to me that patriotic Americans managed to stop um, Kevin McCarthy, so hopefully they can stop this guy, too. I mean, our people, I think, want this guy, um, Daniel Webster. I haven't really read up on them. I've been in travel hell the past week. Um, but there are some good and smart Republicans. Um, among among uh, that guy, um, Trent Franks, I don't think he's running. He's fantastic. We do have some smart Republicans. They aren't all Marco Rubio's and Kevin and, you know, these inarticulate Kevin McCarthy's. Can't we have a speaker who can speak? I'm getting the sense she doesn't love Marco Rubio, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my idea, which I tweeted out yesterday, because, I, I, and by the way, I haven't looked this up. I'm, I'm ta- I've, I've heard many times, I hate saying things that I haven't personally looked up, that the Speaker of the House does not have to be a member of Congress. Right, does it? Um, that being the case, can it be a senator? How about Ted Cruz? Yeah. Now, that would be fun. Hey, how about Jeff Sessions got a vote in the last time they, they went around. Yeah, I think it could be uh, Cruz. Yeah. Uh, hey, Ann, how about the fact that your friend Marco Rubio leaks a story to the media yesterday, or as people do, saying he, the, the Koch brothers are going to give him a billion dollars, a billion dollars. And then a couple hours later, he uh, releases his quarterly financial report, and he's raised a mere $6 million, half of what Ted Cruz raised. Yeah, I, know, I noticed in the paper, I'm glad you mentioned that, we keep hearing about, you know, what a fundraising machine um, Jeb Bush is. Ha-ha, shows you how far money will get you these days. I don't think money really makes a difference. Moving that aside, um, Jeb and, oh, all the money people, they love him, they love him. And then I saw a list of what people had gotten in the New York Times. Cruz is number two. I know. A lot of people apparently like Cruz. And also, I will say, the Texas big money guys are way better than the Northeast big money guys because... Their money in Texas is made in oil. They're like Donald Trump in this sense. They do better if America does better. Um, you can't really off, um, outsource offshore drilling or drilling for oil here in America. So the Texas money is, 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 is not like the usual, at least generally, it's not like the usual donor money where they just want cheap labor and don't care if America is wrecked. Hey, and I, I don't have the I don't have the story right in front of me, but a Salem man has been arrested. <laughs> you know what he, he he they had a they they had arrested the Salem man twice earlier for uh, robbing places, so he was out on bond and he ran into arrest he ran into a convenience store with a woman wearing a pink sweater who distracted the clerk, and then he grabbed a can with contributions for the Animal Rescue League. Um, yeah, immigrants, as you will read in my book, are not really big on animals, plants, women, children. No, this is all to to 
to serve their base animal instincts and then move on. This he's is the from problem my, with peasant cultures. Better get used to it, America. Um, he's hey, from you Iraq. Me. Before I go, um, one of my PC pet peeves, you know, our American hero who um, jumped on the, the Muslim jihadist on the train in France and everything, yes. and he was stabbed by two, two Sacramento men. Um, I mean, unless anything has come out in the last hour or so, all they're telling us about the assailants is that they were two Asians. Okay, now I want to know, what does that mean? The, the guys at my restaurant, or is that like Dinesh D'Souza and Bobby Jindal, Asian? Yeah, so they could be, they could be Shentoists from Japan. They, they could they be. They could be, but, but could probably be, not likely. No, but they could. There are Chinese gangs out here in California. Could be. I, I seriously don't know. But it also could be a Pakistani or an Afghan Asian is not really that descriptive. That's why we had the word oriental, which was never used as an epithet. It's just, oh, we want to be like black people. We have to ban a word, too. Yeah. No, we don't, we don't know who this uh, – we don't know who these people are, obviously, or, or the uh, – Or what the general well, nationality, ethnicity is. Asian is not descriptive. How about Salem Man? <laughs> well, I'm guessing there were other tales they, – Telltale signs. Well, there, here's, a, here's another one, just really quickly. Uh, Cape Cod Times. Crash slows traffic on Route 6. The 32, I'll read you, just go down to the, the third paragraph. The 32 year old driver from Hyannis, whose name was not available, not available, will be charged <laughs> with unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. Someone said his real name, his name is Marcos Rivera. I wonder why his name wasn't available to the, to the newspaper. <laughs> yes, we don't have that information. Yeah, so the guy says, uh, tell you. The guy, Craig on the Cape sent this to me, and he says, uh, I, I'm guessing he, he is not a Mayflower descendant. <laughs> yes, we don't have his name, and why would you want that information? <laughs> <laughs> but we do know that he was he was charged with unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle, so we can draw our own conclusions that he may even know a Salem man who likes to steal uh, contributions to the Animal Rescue League up in Essex County. And and Coulter, thanks for being with us here on the Howie Car Show. The title of your book, Adios America, and we'll uh, we'll reach out. You're willing to debate uh, Paul Ryan? Yeah, of course, and you have to taunt him with that quote. I want my every interview to begin with. There's one person Paul Ryan won't debate if he refuses to. Oh, I'll debate anyone, anytime. Okay. There you Sounds go. Free. There you go. I'm Howie Carr.